Hmm. Wait, what? Is that a GTX 1080? Oh man, I need it. I think it's time for you to come with me. <laughs> Whoa, my video. So while in the midst of testing GTX 1080s from various board partners, Nvidia pulled the trigger last week and launched the Titan X based off the Pascal architecture. Uh, even though this card is primarily meant to provide a high performance yet an affordable solution for scientific deep learning tasks, it nonetheless set a spark within the gaming industry. People were talking about the price, the performance and how much improvement it offers over the GTX 1080. So this video will answer all of those questions and more. Toshiba, now offering OCZ products that are awesome and affordable like the RD400, TR150 and VT180 that are backed by advanced warranty program, now stronger than ever under Toshiba. This is by no means an affordable GPU and I'm serious, priced at $1200 USD, people will think twice before pressing the checkout button. Something to also remember is that none of NVIDIA's board partners will have this card for sale and neither will online retailers. The Titan X will only be available through NVIDIA.com. Now before I go on, there are a few things you guys have to be aware of. I mentioned that NVIDIA is supposedly marketing this as a more of a professional solution since it features over 40 teraflops of 8-bit integer performance. While it will indeed get folks in the deep learning community excited, I've also seen a lot of gamers snapping up these cards. Plus, this Titan X has an illuminated GeForce logo on its side, so gamers are obviously a good portion of its intended audience. Glancing at the specs, the Titan X is something incredible. It's got 40% more CUDA cores than the GTX 1080, 12 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory, and while the clock frequencies are a little lower than its younger brother, the mass of cores and texture units should make up for that. Physically, the card looks like a blacked out Founders Edition 1080 with the angular sides and the exact same cooler. I love the stealth look and it's gorgeous. Considering this card has a 250 watt TDP, it's not a surprise to see an 8 plus 6 pin power input. This also grants a good amount of power input overhead for overclocking the GP102 core as well. The card's underside is completely covered with a backplate which houses Nvidia's logo as well as the GeForce Titan X label. As for I.O., you're getting three DisplayPort 1.3 outputs, a single HDMI 2.0 connector and a legacy DVI. Given this card has the same cooler found on the 1080's Founders Edition, temperatures actually start off quite well and then end up hovering around the 85 degrees Celsius mark. As we've seen from the past, Nvidia's boost algorithms work hard enough to balance power consumption fan speeds, temperatures, and frequencies to achieve optimal performance. Taking a look at fan speeds, that was the first sacrifice. As you can see, the rotational speeds are higher than every other reference design we've seen during this generation. The difference is just above 500 RPM, which isn't that much considering what's powering the Titan X, but it isn't quite either. Our sample was able to hit a constant speed of about 1600 MHz even after hours of gameplay, but I'm sure many of you will want to throw a custom water cooling solution, and that should give you a lot more headroom for overclocking. Like I said before, the stock cooler isn't quiet, and it isn't loud either. There was noticeably a lot more fan noise than the GTX 1080, but it was under control. This is a powerful yet power efficient GPU, likely because Nvidia already has a good handle on their 60 nanometer manufacturing process. Uh, they have been able to cram 12 billion transistors and 12 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory into this card, and it only requires just 27 watts more power than the 980 Ti and 18 watts more than the Fury X. This is beyond unbelievable. So are you guys ready for the benchmarks? Here you go.
1440p tests at Ultra Settings were dominated by the Titan X. That's all I have to say. Go ahead, continue watching. I think it's safe to say that the Titan X is a true 4K drivable GPU. Just look at it, everything at max settings and you're achieving close to 60 frames per second in most titles, whereas more than that in some other ones. Jaw-dropping results. Okay, let me set up the stage for you guys. The Titan X is a ludicrously fast card, and you've seen it by the numbers, but there's still more room left under the tank for overclocking. However, there are a few limitations. First, Nvidia hasn't allowed for any software-based voltage unlocking, uh, at least for the time being, but perhaps we can expect somewhere around those lines in the future. Second, this is a reference card only, which means you will never see a custom heatsink from board partners, which is disappointing because the stock cooler isn't meant to hold its fort when the Titan X is pushed above its limits. But I can't wait to see what this card can do when put underwater. With that out of the way, how far were we able to push this bad boy? Pretty freaking far. With the generous 20% power limit overhead NVIDIA currently provides, we were able to hit the constant core frequency of 1923 MHz and the gddr 5 modules operated just a little north of 11 gigabits per second. And here's a test run of the division at max settings in 4K. This kind of performance from one card is beyond incredible. A single Titan X achieved performance levels that almost approaches two GTX 1080s in SLI. So who would actually buy a graphics card that costs so much? Naturally, some budding scientists will see this as an awesome value considering the price for an equivalent card from Nvidia's Tesla lineup. The new Titan X can also be targeted towards people who are looking for a GTX 1080 SLI setup as the price points are similar and the single card solution won't encounter some of the dual card system potential pickups. Of course, there's no real reason to spend $1,200 on a GPU um, unless if you want the absolute best of the best, but for the rest, you'd have to think twice before clicking the checkout button. I'll admit, I would spend $1,200 on a 6900K for my upcoming workstation PC and that will last me for the next two to three years. Who knows how long this Titan X would remain the fastest GPU on the market. But for now, this card is the fastest GPU that you can buy. So how many of you guys would actually pick up one of these cards? Or how many of you would actually consider spending that much money on a GPU? Uh, definitely share your thoughts down below. I'm Ebro with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.